Today, we're gonna to be talking about benchmarks for the PC I just built. This video covers application tests and games as well. And at the end of the video, I'll give my opinion of the overall performance of the system. Let's get started. So for those who aren't familiar with the PC build, it's a mini ITX build with an Asus motherboard with the B550 chipset. It has an AMD 5800X processor and a gigabyte 1060 graphics card. Before running these tests, I made sure to download the latest NVIDIA graphics drivers, as well as the latest BIOS version for my motherboard. For the chassis and CPU fans, I adjusted the fan curves in the BIOS to be pretty aggressive. Quick tip for those who are either considering this motherboard or already have it, you can use the AIO pump header for a chassis fan. You just need to go into the BIOS settings and configure the fan curve for the AIO pump header. So, so you'll have to enter the temperature and the fan percentage for three different levels. All right, let's jump right into application benchmarks. I tried to pick the more popular benchmarks, so it gives you an easy way to compare to your system or to other systems. I don't have specific comments for each of the following benchmarks, so if you're interested in a specific one, just pause the video. Along with measuring the performance of my PC with these application benchmarks, I also compiled a list of other benchmarks from similar processors from both Intel and AMD. The overall theme here is that if you have more cores, you're going to be scoring better on these tests. So either a higher score or lower time in seconds. To be clear, I don't have all of these processors, so I'm not swapping them in and out of the system. These are just benchmarks I found online to give us a general idea of how my PC stacks up against other benchmarks. I use the core temp application to measure the maximum CPU temperature during these tests. None of the following temperatures are concerning to me at all. The AMD Ryzen 7 series are expected to run hotter. And I think the Noctua NHU12S CPU cooler is performing well here. If necessary, I can try to add a second fan to the cooler, or I can upgrade to a larger air cooler like the NHD15. All right, next we're moving on to gaming benchmarks. Starting off with the oldest game I tested, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I included it because it's still popular for both casual and competitive gamers, where frame rate actually matters. This game doesn't have an in-game benchmarking tool, so it was the hardest to measure. I played multiplayer on low, medium, and high settings for several minutes to measure the game. This PC build performs well in low, medium, and high. Ultimately, it depends on how competitive you are and how much you care about frame rate. Again, this game is not very graphically intensive, so the temperatures here are more or less the same. Next, I measured Crisis 3. This game also does not have a built-in benchmarking tool. I found an 8-year-old video from Linus Tech Tips where they were benchmarking this game from a checkpoint in the Welcome to the Jungle level, so I decided to use that. At first, it gives a good sense of the water and collision physics. Then through the door, you're led into a pretty intense firefight, also with some explosions as well. Again, I thought my PC performed well on low, high, and ultra graphic settings here. Even though the 0.1% low FPS for the ultra setting measured 8 FPS, I think I'm still playing ultra here because if you're playing Crisis 3, you're probably playing for the graphics. Not surprisingly here, as we move up in the graphic settings, the system does get warmer. But none of these temperatures are alarming to me at all. Next, I tested the racing game Dirt Rally. I used the in-game benchmark to measure this game. And it performed the best out of any game I tested. It crushed the ultra low graphic setting with an average FPS of 669. For this game, I'm probably playing from medium to ultra low settings because I don't care as much about the graphics, I care more about the smooth gameplay. The temperatures for all three graphic settings here are more or less the same. Let's continue. Next, moving on to more modern games, 
I tested Red Dead Redemption 2 with its in-game benchmarking tool. For this game, I tested low, balanced, and ultra graphic settings. Personally, for this game, I'm probably choosing the balanced option here because even the 1% low is just under 30 FPS, which to me is very playable for this game. Again, as we increase the graphic settings for this game, the temperature slightly rises for the system, but nothing alarming at all. Next, I tested Watch Dogs Legion with its in-game benchmarking tool. I tested the low, medium, and ultra settings for this game, and I think my system performed well in all three. Although again, I'm likely choosing the medium setting here, just for a good balance between performance and graphics. For this game, the temperatures were essentially the same for every graphic setting. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. Anyway, let's move on. Next, I tested Assassin's Creed Valhalla with its in-game benchmarking tool. Even though for the last two games, I would pick the balanced or medium graphic settings, I think for this game, I would definitely pick ultra high. The 0.1% low is 28 FPS, so I'd be expecting pretty smooth gameplay with the ultra high setting here. Again, we see the temperatures rise as we increase the graphic settings. Besides the low CPU temperature, which was the highest. Although the difference is so small, I'm chalking it up to margin of error. So what do I think about the overall performance of this build? I think it's excellent. To put it in perspective, my previous PC build was a second generation i7 processor. So this system is leaps and bounds over the previous build, even though I kept my 1060 from that build. So whether it was application tests or gaming at 1080p, I thought it performed very well and the temperatures are cool enough to where I'm not concerned about them. When planning the build, I made sure to think ahead when I eventually upgrade the graphics card. That is, if the market ever gets to a more reasonable point. Power supply is a 750 watt and should be able to handle up to a 3080, or a graphics card similar to that. I think building the PC was a lot of fun. I hadn't done it in about a decade, so check the link in the description if you're interested in seeing that. Thanks for sticking around, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.